In a typical city or town, on a typical residential street, we find a typical home occupied by a typical American family. Like millions of his fellow Americans, John Q. Public earns enough money to keep up the payments on a new car. He takes great pride in owning a fine, new, long-term mortgaged home that was built to last a lifetime. Mrs. John Q. Public no longer finds housework fatiguing drudgery thanks to a host of labor-saving devices, including her husband. Mr. John Q., because of a 40-hour week, has the leisure to dream about his favorite sport. And that is a strike to start us out here, uh, Ray Shannon then. 142 through the seventh and that strike. George Young with 130 through the fifth and a double. And Mr. Young leading by 38 sticks for this game and 108 for the match. George, George Young, the winner of the toss, elected to start on six, finish on five. And those ABC and All-Star rules provide that you alternate games. So he does that in the first and third. He'll be finishing on six and this the second. Young and Mr. Young, who has been given to strings in these past few weeks, now has one going here of six straight strikes, 160 through the sixth and a double to 142 through the seventh and a single strike, and a lead possibly of 48 pins for this game, which would put him 114 up for the match. George Young, a tremendous shooter on five. Whoops, whoops. On the over and not a clean Brooklyn, you can't depend on those things. The five pin up there as the magic triangle pin indicator shows you there. And the automatic pin spotter setting it back shows George Young that the second ball is necessary if he is going to take this spare leave. Gee, that interrupted a pretty good string. Covers it rather full, I thought, didn't you? Beautiful spare shooting. And George has 209 through the eighth and a spare to 142 through the seventh and a strike. And Ray Shannon could come within, gee, within 37 for this game here if he could hit on six. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No 5-7 to shoot for, but still the 7-pin. And that 5-7 almost reminds me to tell you that Ray Shannon, in the first game on this same alley, 6 in the fourth frame, caught a 3-10 split, the baby split, and converted it. Then he got a 6-7-10 on this same alley in the eighth frame, and that one he couldn't convert after the 7-pin here now. Puts it down, just puts it down for his spare to give Ray Shannon 162 through the eighth and that spare to 209 through the eighth and a spare. And so Ray trails by 47 for this game and that puts him down 113 for the match. Ray blew a 10 pin on this alley five in the first game on the ninth frame. He's now up in the 10th. And that is a strike any way you figure. A beauty. And this could be a good game for Ray with 182 through the ninth and that first strike. 212 if he could go all the way. Gee, it's been rugged. That's an open frame in the sixth that you saw in this. The second game was when Ray blew a 5-9 spare on this same alley five in the sixth frame. Second shot. And there you have it. Yes, sir. For a double now. Ray Shannon is just a matter of count now away from 212. What do you say? 210, 211? Or the full count for 212. Ray at the underlane ball return. Still badly back. But maybe this is the turn of events. Last shot. A 
big one it was every step of the way. A strikeout in the 10th frame for Ray Shannon and a 2.12 to add to 180. And now George Young, who really has it salted if he can keep going the way he is, on six. Pete's sake, what happened to that seven pin? My gosh, that looked like a good hit, didn't it? 228 for George. If he can get it, and 10 more pins here, he needs this for his bonus shot, and that's going to cut down what could have been a brilliant game there. Oh, there it is, for his spare. And so George Young does have the 228 we referred to through the ninth, and this spare, and if he can get the full count on this second shot, a 248. And isn't this odd? George Young, who gave us a double last week with 279, 279, should he get an eight pin count here, would have another double. No, sir, no double here. George Young with the full count, 420 pins and a 248 in the second game. And he seems to be progressing in the right direction with 246, 248. And the winner of the second game is George Young over Ray Shannon, 248 to 212. For rugged performance, for that winning basket, for a hit in any league, it's Voight, another fine product of AMF. Voight, maker of America's finest athletic balls, is top choice of over 100,000 schools and colleges. Kids of all ages go for Voight because they know these rubber-covered balls outwear other types anywhere. Even under the hardest kind of use, indoors or out, on any playing surface, you can depend on Voight. Voight balls are 100% waterproof keep their shape and weight for life. If wet or muddy, just wipe off a Voight and put it back in play again. Voight balls are official, waterproof, scuff-proof. Whether it's football, kickball, softball, basketball, or volleyball, for long play and lasting fun, give the athlete in your family a Voight. There's a Voight rubber-covered ball in every price range. Right now, the California delegation is deciding whether or not to rescind the action that it took earlier in voting unanimously to support the Lehman Amendment, which will be offered this evening on the Civil Rights Program. Now, what happened is this. Congressman John Moss, one of California's representatives to the Platform Committee, made a strong appeal before the members of the California delegation to accept the party platform as it was voted this morning. Congressman Moss just left a few moments ago. The caucus is underway. Let's listen to uh, right now. This is uh, Mr. Paul Ziffrin, the California National Committeeman. He's conferring with the chairman of the meeting for the moment. In just a moment, we'll hear from one of the members of the Democratic uh, National Party. Well, thanks for tuning in tonight's presentation of TVDays.com. I hope you enjoyed the Democratic Convention. There's a lot more especially if you go to tvdays.com where I'm posting a lot of uncut interviews from the Democratic Convention of 56 and 60. A lot to learn. Well, we here today are selecting a man who must be more than something of a good candidate, more than a good politician or a good liberal or a good conservative. We are selecting the head of the most powerful nation on earth, the man who literally will hold in his hands the power of survival or destruction of freedom or slavery. By the way, if you go online, Amazon is selling Dr. Frank Poole, and it's supposed to be a limited edition from 2019, some toy fair, which I didn't see this at any of the toy fairs. But this is, we know, a cool collector's item because if you're a 2001 fan, it's very little material out there. And what is, is more expensive than you really want to invest in it. So somebody like Todd McFarlane should start producing some 2001 properties. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week with another great adventure. Oh, but first, these messages. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid uh, I can't do that. 
What are you talking about, Hal? This conversation can serve no purpose anymore.